So you've been with a narcissist and they left you to go find someone else. They left you to go be with another person. Maybe a person that they cheated with, maybe a person they found just instantly after you, maybe two weeks later they're engaged, married, all these type of things. And you start wondering in the back of your mind, are they going to change for that person? Are they gonna be different for that person than me? Like what was wrong with me? Why? All these different types of things. So I wanna tell you today, three different ways that narcissists change for the next supply. And then three things I want you to remember when you're viewing that and when you're thinking that. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. And we do it on all the different platforms, dropping small nuggets of truth each day to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, all under Raw Motivations. If you want to hear from the wife's perspective, check out our new podcast, Trauma, Drama, and Life. It's on Apple Podcasts. Hear from myself and my wife, Kayla Taylor. Would love to be able to have you interact there. DM us, send us an email of some of the topics you want to hear about as well. Also, if you haven't had a chance to be able to check out the NARC app, it stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. We have a great time each month where we actually bring in coaches, psychologists, survivors from all across the globe to be able to help inspire you and help you through that monthly coaching, but help you through that growth mindset as you continue to shift forward in your healing journey. <clears throat> Check that out. We have that monthly call. We have weekly calls that we actually focus on of helping encourage and push you forward in your growth. Uh, also, my wife who did the podcast with me, she's also coming into the NARC app one time a month uh, to go live in there as well to be able to give more perspective and answer questions for people as well. So check that out. It's at narcapp.com, N-A-R-C-A-P-P, narcapp.com. If you want to talk to me sometime, either to work through the idea of the trauma bond and how to be able to rewire your mindset when you're like, I, I know in my heart and that I still want to be with this person. I still want to interact with this person, but I know logically in my head, uh, that's not a good idea. A lot of times people have trouble figuring out what's actually going on there and how to find the truth. So I try to help equip people with the tools to be able to break free of the trauma bond, be able to get through the rumination phase, the detox phase of getting away from a narcissist and set up healthy boundaries so you don't go back to a toxic person and you don't get involved with a toxic person down the road. So if you want to talk sometime, go to rawmotivation.com, click on one-on-ones. We'll love to be able to set a time to be able to chat. As we dive in today, well, the question that's posed is, will a narcissist change for the next person. Now, if you've been on social media for a while, you normally know the first phrase that comes out of people's mind, minds and mouths is narcissists aren't going to change. Like nothing is actually going to be different. They're not going to change at all. So what's, what, what, what's actually happening here? Okay, well, what about at the end? Because a lot of you might be confused of like, wait, at the end of the relationship, they actually did change. They, they changed how they were talking, how they're acting, all those things, all that is is manipulation. We've got a couple of videos about that of narcissists, how they change at the end or narcissists wants you to leave, things like that. Okay. But with the new supply, it seems like everything looks different. Maybe on the social media, maybe the interactions, maybe your kids are reporting back different stuff. They're like, they're completely different. All of a sudden you're like, wait a second. It seems like they changed. And one thing you have to remember as we dive into this is a lot of times the narcissist will change to be able to get the new supply, to be able to get the person that they want, just like they changed to be able to get you. Oftentimes that modification or that mask that they put up is done intentionally to be able to secure that person and lock them into a relationship that they can continue to feed off of and get supply. Well, when we're talking about narcissists and the next supply, I want to talk to you about three ways that a narcissist changes for the next supply. The number one is they change mass. Masks, if I can say it right. They change masks. A lot of times when they go to the next person, the mask that they have will only be compared and good for you. So they have to build a new one or if they have to modify or put another layer on it to appear to be the way that that person wants them to be. Maybe you notice this in your relationship or maybe you notice this in the next relationship where all of a sudden their style completely changes. They look different. They act different. All of a sudden their likes and dislikes are like, I've never liked that. What are you talking about? You're like, you love doing that. You love interacting. You love watching that movie with me. Like all this kind of things. You're like, wait a second, how does this make sense? And all of a sudden they start to switch how they act and how they discuss and how they process and how they go through stuff. All of it looks completely different. And you're left there just kind of scratching your head like, I don't actually understand what's going on because that person is not the same person. 
Some of you might identify with this in just the small aspect of if you've ever gone to counseling with a narcissist and you walk in, they're completely different. Same idea, same concept, setting up a different mask for the therapist to be able to confuse them. But you'll see it with the new supply of like, all of a sudden they're friendly, they're nice, they're engaging. Like, what's actually going on? Well, for a narcissist, getting with another person, getting with a new supply, oftentimes it's a big game. It's a chase. And so many narcissists grab onto the idea of the chase of let me get this person. Now, something that I would get addicted to of let me see about getting this person, being with this person, interacting with this person, developing a connection with this person, whatever it would be. And then all of a sudden it's there and it's like, okay, like I don't know what to do now. Let me go find someone else. A lot of times you'll see that addiction to the chase. Narcissists, first off, they change for their new supply, but they change masks. Second thing is they change tactics. Maybe they've never posted on social media or they've never put you on social media. Now they're putting everybody on social media. The new supply, they're all over the place. The best people ever. Well, they have to convince you and they have to convince the world that they're happy. Maybe they're now traveling when they wouldn't travel with you. All those things. And you start to see like, wait a second, they're doing all the things that I wanted them to do. Why? Well, when it comes down to it, a lot of times narcissists aren't creative. And they know the things that were exciting for you or the things that you wanted that they kept dangling in front of you, it works for the next person. So let's just take that. Let's put it with the next person, see how it goes. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll last longer. Maybe I can manipulate them a little bit more. A lot of times that creative piece. Oftentimes when they go to the new person, it's new manipulation. Like, let me try something different. This worked to manipulate here. Let me insert that first. Maybe it'll make the relationship last longer. Maybe it'll make the relationship more subservient to what I want. So a lot of times you'll see them change tactics, change aspects of how that abuse is actually going to come out. The third thing that they'll change is a lot of times they'll change the actual abuse. Now you might look at that and be like, hey, I don't understand that. But the abuse you experienced is not what everyone else saw. Like a lot of times when you're with a narcissist, the abuse that happened to you, no one else saw. Just like the same thing when you're looking at the new supply, no one's going to see the actual abuse that's happening because it happens behind closed doors. It happens when people aren't watching, when people aren't understanding. It happens through passive aggressive, the covertness, the small things that people don't understand, don't see, the dog whistling, the gaslighting, different things like that is what happens. And you're on the outside being like, it looks great. Well, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. What you see might not be what the other person wants. Now, when I'm talking about this really quick, just a side note, when I'm talking about this, like what you see, like let's say, let's say you always wanted to go vacationing on the beach. Like the beach is like the best place. You love it. And then you see them go vacationing on the beach. Sometimes what actually happens, the narcissist, again, going back, they're not very creative. They're like, hey, we're going to do this. They're like, hey, if I do this, it dog whistles my previous supply. They don't think that, but that's like the idea of like, hey, it's going to show them that they're awful because I'm doing everything that they wanted. But you might not know and you might not realize that the next person hates the beach and they'd rather go to the mountains or they'd rather go someplace else. And as a result, it's another way to be able to lock them in and be able to say, well, yeah, maybe we can go do that. A lot of times their tactics sometimes shift and change, but the abuse still happens just the same. So that's three ways that narcissist changes for the next supply. Three things I need you to remember. Okay. Number one, you're watching love bombing from the outside. You're looking from the outside thinking like, wow, it looks so great. When, when you were engaged or when you were with that person, that's how other people thought about you. Wow, they look so great. You know, continue to happen over and over and over because you're seeing it from the outside. You're seeing the mask. You're seeing a brand new version from the outside. And you have to remember that that is just going through that love bombing stage. And oftentimes when you're looking at it, it's the same thing that other people looked at in your relationship. Second thing you need to remember is that the narcissist didn't magically figure it out on their own. So many times they go to the new supply, to the next person, and you're left there being like, they've changed, they figured it out when they haven't done anything. They haven't gotten to therapy, they haven't been honest, they haven't actually shown and exposed like who they actually are, and we just think that they magically figured it out. It doesn't work that way. Last thing I want you to remember is the longer you watch, the less that you heal or the slower that you heal. So oftentimes we're consumed with looking and watching and wondering and waiting. And oftentimes this goes back to a concept in another video called pain shopping. When you're really going back to get an emotional high or emotional kick or like, wait a second, what's actually going on? And it messes with your mind so much, you get to the place where you're perpetuating the trauma bond that you developed with the narcissist and it continues forward even when they're out of your life. 
So many times we talk to people on a daily basis that are away from the narcissist, two weeks, two months, two years, 20 years, and they're still stuck. Because in their mind, they haven't been able to reconcile or get out of the rumination phase, and they're still stuck in the trauma bond because they haven't had a chance to rewire their story and be able to change that story to change their life. They're still believing a fantasy. They're still latching on to a false narrative. You see, oftentimes you're concerned about the next supply because you don't want to face yourself. You don't want to face what's actually going on of like, if they actually get together and they stay together, what does that mean about me? How does that make me not worthy? How does that make me not enough? How does that make me not incomplete? So many times people are concerned about watching the next supply because they're more concerned about what that affects them, how that affects them, and what that means about themselves. I don't say that lightly to put you down or to make you feel bad, but I do say it to bring out the truth of a lot of times that is the case of trying to justify or validate or show or excuse or anything like that. And the problem is you stand here and you look at them and that comparison robs you of any aspect of joy or of self-worth. So I want to encourage you today, if you're struggling with that, to find the truth. Find yourself. Understand who you actually are because you are worth more than a comparison to another person. You are worth more to what the narcissist is going to trigger and dog whistle you to make you to believe and to think. Don't let them still control you after you're away from the relationship because they will. By their actions, by their attitudes, by the things they do with the next person, it'll still be a smoke signal to you to show you that you're the crazy one. When in reality, you're not. But you need to understand if you're really concerned about the next supply and how that looks, take a look at yourself. Because a lot of times there's unhealed aspects that are trying to identify or compare or even be jealous about the next person versus acknowledging the stuff that we need to work on inside.